Hey everyone, this is TJR, and it's time for a review of the recent re-release of Fleetwood Mac. I want to stress this is not a review of the album per se. The album has already stood the test of time. This is a review of the recent reissue of the album. Fleetwood Mac is the band's 10th album from 1975. It is their second self-titled album, the first being their self-titled 1968 debut album. It is sometimes referred to as the White Album. This is the version of the band that most people think of when they think of Fleetwood Mac. This is the first album featuring the lineup of Lindsey Buckingham, Stevie Nicks, Christine McVie, John McVie, and Mick Fleetwood. Now, the interesting thing is, in 2004, Warner Brothers released a remastered version of this album with five bonus tracks. I'm holding up a copy of it right here. The album has recently been re-released again, and this has included a new remastering of it as well. It's been released in multiple formats, as a single disc of just the album, as a two-disc CD set, and as a four-disc deluxe set that also includes the album on vinyl as well. As near as I can tell, there is no single vinyl release of this new remaster. So, what's different? And that's what we're going to talk about. First of all, all the bonus tracks on the 2004 version are included on the 2017 re-release. So, you lose nothing in regards to tracks when you, if you purchase this new edition. In addition, disc two of this new version gives you an alternate version of the album comprised of earlier takes. This is similar to what the Beatles did with their two CD disc release of Sgt. Pepper from last year. You also get some very early live performance of some of the album's tracks as well. Now, I like this album, but probably not enough to spend uh, what they're asking for the deluxe edition, which I think is uh, retailing on Amazon right now for about maybe roughly $75. Uh, but if you're curious, the deluxe edition includes an additional CD of early live material, a DVD of the album uh, featuring uh, brand new uh, surround sound audio mixes, and a LP version of the album on 180 gram vinyl. So once again, all the bonus tracks that were included on this 2004 version will also be on this brand new version as well. So let's take a look at how they're packaged in the booklets. The 2004 edition uh, featured this slip case here, and it was packaged in a standard jewel case. There we go. Inside, of course, uh, the booklet that was closed with the original uh, featured photos, and it also featured a, uh, an essay uh, written by Parker uh, Polterbaugh, if I say his name right, hopefully. It also included all the uh, lyrics as well. Now, the new two-CD version that I'm holding up here is a three-way fold-out here. And, of course, you've got the, uh, the two CDs here in these pockets right here. And in here is the, uh, the actual booklet right here. Let me show you the back real quick here. There we go. And this booklet... Uh, features a whole lot more photos that you didn't have on the last one, and it features a brand new article written by David Wilde. It also includes all the lyrics, and it also includes, uh, along with uh, just photos of the group, it also includes photos of memorabilia, such as handwritten lyrics, some neat things like that. You probably get more of this, I'm sure, with the... Uh with the deluxe edition, and it also features the lyrics too. One thing I notice is that the typeface is larger in this booklet on the new release versus the booklet from the 2004 release. And I'm sure they realize that there are many aging fans of this band who need reading glasses now, so thank you for making the typeface a little bigger. Much appreciated. Once again, I want to stress this is not a review of the actual album itself. This is a review of the re-release. And so now we're going to talk about the bonus tracks. Now, on the original, uh, not I should say the original release, but on the original uh, 2004 version, there were five bonus tracks. These consisted of the 45 single versions of the of three hit singles that were off the album, plus two unreleased tracks. All of these have been included in the new edition as well.
But also, once again, there is that alternate version of the album comprised of earlier takes. How are these? I think they're pretty solid. Um, they really demonstrate what a very tight live unit this band became, and very quickly, I may add, with a whole new lineup. If there's one thing I've gleaned from listening to this alternate version of the album is that the devil is in the details. It's in the little production nuances that were added after the initial basic tracks were recorded. Uh, but however, these, these early basic tracks hold up really well in my opinion. I think you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of listening to them uh, as well. And then of course there's the live tracks. Uh, these live tracks all state, when I looked at them in my player, uh, live from the Warner Brothers studios. And so I'm not sure what the context was that they were performing these live. Maybe this was like a promotional performance to help publicize the album, I'm guessing. But these are very solid live takes. And once again, the interesting thing for me as a musician is after you record the album and you have all these little subtle production tracks that you add in that just add nuances to the to how you hear the songs, now you have to strip it down with just the four of them without any other backing musicians and how are they going to reinterpret them live and they do a great job in my opinion. Now my understanding of course is that the third CD in the deluxe edition features more live material and so once again it's up to you whether you want to go ahead and spring for that larger version. So overall I'm going to give a real positive thumbs up to the bonus content on this two CD version that I've purchased. But now, what about the audio? What about the remastering of the actual original album? How is it and how does it compare to the version released back in 2004? The results were quite surprising in my opinion. Remastering is a very tricky art. You're trying to improve and enhance the original two-track stereo master. You're trying to bring out more nuance that maybe you weren't hearing in previous versions. Oftentimes what happens with a lot of remasterings is the album is just made louder and that's it. Oftentimes albums just get over compressed and when you do that you lose dynamic range and when you lose dynamic range you lose the emotion of the performance. Now the 2004 uh, version uh, was made louder than its previous than any previous release. You still got a good sense of dynamic range. I don't think it was a bad remastering at all. I think it was pretty good. I was kind of expecting that when I listened to this newer version, though, it would just be made louder on top of it. So here's a look at the audio track of the album's opening number, Monday Morning, from the 2004 version. Now this is a punchy track where everybody's kind of hitting full volume right from the get-go and maintaining it for the entire song. You don't see a whole lot of headroom, but you see some. Now let's look at the recent re-release and you'll notice the difference. They've actually made this track a little quieter. They've backed off some of the compression and they've left a little bit more headroom on this. This really surprised me and you will notice this even more so when you check out other tracks. Let's take a look at 2004's World Turning. Now this song has a lot of dynamic range in it because we go from very quiet and we build up. Now let's look at it on the recent version and you'll see a huge difference there. Once again, when I play them back to back, I can hear the difference. And just for fun, let's also look at Landslide. There we are, 2004. And now here's Landslide 2018. Once again, notice the difference. Now, I'll be honest, I still think the 04 version is a good remastering. It's good audio quality. I don't think they've destroyed it like I've seen with some remasters. But I appreciate that on this new version, they've backed it off a little more and left a little bit more headroom so that you can feel a little bit more dynamic range. I think it becomes most apparent when you actually do an A to B back to back comparison. However, I think both remasters are good. I think it's all going to depend on whether you like having that extra bit of loudness. I personally am going to go for the, to the new version where we've backed off on a little bit more and allowed it to breathe a bit more. So I'm going to give a big thumbs up to this new recent re-release of Fleetwood Mac from 1975. And if you already purchased, you know, the 2004 version a while back, 
I would definitely say this is a good, solid upgrade. I spent about roughly $14.99 on mine. I don't regret it. And the only real complaint I have is that I do kind of wish that the single 180 gram vinyl version that was included in the deluxe edition was released as just a single record uh, for about like 20 bucks. I think that'd be worth uh, a worthwhile price. They may yet do this, of course. And so you might want to keep your eyes open before you spring for the big version if you don't want all that extra stuff. This is TJR, and uh, what do you think? Have you checked this version out? Which version did you check out? And, and tell us your thoughts. At any rate, though, I want to thank you all for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And if you do subscribe, be sure to click notifications so you can know when I release new videos. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.